Hello there, I'm Overflow, and today I'm going to teach you the new fastest way to install Arch Linux. So, I made a video on this before, and I'm pr a pretty big Arch nerd, but the thing is, that last video I'd call it a little outdated. There's a couple reasons why. A, number one, the script that I showed in that video, it got moved to a different GitHub repository, and apparently a few people say that the owner was a little hostile, so that's not exactly good. And a couple other people said that it's not hard to install, or they'll just use Arch Linux GUI or whatever. So here, I'm going to show you a new method that uses the default Arch ISO and does not use any other like utilities that aren't built into the script. So right here, I started up a pretty simple virtual machine. I just loaded up GNOME boxes and I got the latest, I th believe it is May 1st Arch ISO. This method will not work on any older ISO, but so you need to get the May 1st Arch ISO or anything newer. So I'm going to be showing you this Python script. And I'm sure a lot of other YouTubers have, but I just thought that I might as well update it because now we have a newer, better method. So this method is a lot better because you don't need to get any other scripts, you don't need to download another distro, and it's generally faster because you don't have to download a whole other distro. For example, Arch Linux by itself is around like 900 megs, and the lowest version of Manjaro would be around a gig seven. So this is lighter, it's faster, and maybe you just want to set up like a server with Arch Linux. You don't have to like use a GUI or use Manjaro Architect. So let's get started. So first we have our terminal. So what we would do is we'd say Python dash M Arch install. And this should get us started. So a lot of people have said about the Arch Anarchy script. I have never used the Arch Anarchy script before, but I would guess that this is similar. So here we are at this interface where we get to modify our instruct install. So this is if you ever use a void installer before, this is pretty similar. But I'd say that the void installer is it's a little bit more intuitive and you'll see later. So Arch install language, we're going to stick with English, and you don't get much options either. It's English, Dutch, French, German, Spanish, or Swedish. So that's a place where it's limited. Definitely like Calamares and other languages gets you, and other installers gets you more. Keyboard layout, we're going to stick with US because that's the keyboard I have. We have the mirror region, which I'm just going to pick US because that's the closest mirrors we have here. United States. You can do other things. Select hard drive. We will be using this. With, so the first one, so I'm using GNOME boxes, which kind of does it weirdly. I'm pretty sure that's like some sort of like EFI partition. I'm not sure. That is our actual hard drive. So let's do the disk layout. So you have the option of an actual like partitioner, which Let's go into it. We're not going to use the actual partition. So you get to select partition layout and whatever. It's pretty close to FDisk if you ever used it. So let's just create an EXT4. So you put the start sector, which is going to be zero for us, and the end sector, which is 100%, because we're just creating it to show you the partitioner. This is the partitioner. It's pretty basic. And th there's definitely going to be a lot of revisions needed. For example, you can create a new partition, suggest a new partition layout, delete a partition, delete all partitions, or assign a mount point. And the rest of these, they're basically like management things. So let's delete all partitions. So you can see from there that the partition manager it's a little basic and i definitely asked for more features and maybe even the option to use like an already there manager like f disk or c disk i'm not sure about the second one but i know f disk exists so let's just have it wipe all drives and we'll go with ext4 encryption password we're going to do no encryption for this one bootloader yes i'd like to use grub Use swap, sure, why not? Specify host name. 
yeah, Arch Linux would be fine. Root password, we're just going to go with the old 1234. And of course, if that is another great thing, it'll tell you if the password is too weak. So we'll just do it again because this is a VM. And you specify your user account. So you can just say, yes, we'll just do 1234 again. Don't hack me, guys. It's super unsecure. And this is something kind of weird. It doesn't actually display how many digits your password has. It just displays it all stars. That's kind of a whatever. That's, we're going to confirm an exit because we're only using one account. Select profile. Let's just do desktop. You could do server and whatever, but we're going to do desktop. We, let's go with, hmm. I have, always have a hard time treating desktop environments. Let's go with old trusty KDE. Uh, did, did, did. Okay. I'm pretty sure we could get by with all open source or VMware. I'm not sure what GNOME boxes use, so let's just go with all open source. That's not the installer's problem, but it's more of a me problem. Audio, I'm gonna go with Pipewire because that's a better one. Linux kernels, you can go with Linux, Linux Harden, Linux LTS, or Linux Zen. Since again, this is the VM, we're just gonna stick with the default Linux. Now you can do additional packages, and I really like this because, you know, let's say that you always want, you know, flat pack or whatever, you don't have to spend extra long time typing out those packages. You can just have the installer add them for them. So let's just do Firefox. G parted just in case like something goes wrong with our disk flat pack and I th those are like definitely my utilities that I would use so Firefox G parted flat pack so let's just go with those oh yeah yay I think that'd be good yay okay yeah so yay wasn't added because we don't have the one of the arch repos enabled so we can't do that. So network installation. We're gonna use network manager because we chose KDE time zone. We're gonna go with America Chicago because that's where that's the closest place I have for my time zone. T automatically sync. You probably should be doing additional. Yes, we should do multi lib and let's not do testing. Okay, I think we're pretty good. So you can definitely review it again, like English, US, you ask your partitions. This is something I definitely review. Encryption password, grub install, true, arch Linux, whatever. Let's go. So save configuration. Whoops. Save all. Okay, wait. Okay, it's not save configuration. It's the install. It's not save configuration. Let's hit enter. And it gives you a countdown before it nukes your data. So I'm fine with it nuking my data because, again, I booted up a VM for this. So you can look at everything. I wonder if this has a dash V flag. I'm not sure. Now it's installing. So let's go through what some of you guys might be saying. Number one, this script is bloat. It's not bloat. Like, this is what I would install if I'm installing it brand new from scratch but you know it definitely saves a lot longer because if you look at literally any other tutorial on YouTube before the May 1st ISO they're all like two hours long they're extremely complicated maybe you like reading the arch wiki which is an amazing source that's gonna be like a really long time because you're gonna be there's no way that you're gonna like find out what to do if something goes wrong then that so be it you have a system where you just have a TTY you can't do anything, so it's going to be extremely hard to do anything. And if you're going the Manjaro method, it's bloated. You're going to have to set up a whole freaking system first before you can actually, like, do anything. So, and then if you are using Anarchy Script, which I do not know if it's bundled. So, let's just, so to make all of you arch nerds not angry, let's go through the two possibilities.
If Arch Insta all the Anarchy script was bundled, then okay, whatever. It's probably the same thing, and I'm just doing the same thing. But if it wasn't, then it's a lot harder. It's not built in, and if you're a noob who got recommended Arch, then you don't know anything. Okay. So now let's go through some feedback that I have for this script. So a couple of things. Number one, I wish that it had something that's like with a name and a starting command that isn't like kind of obscure. Because Python dash M Arch install, like if you download an Arch ISO and you didn't know what you were doing and you didn't know about the script, then you probably wouldn't be using it and you probably reboot and install Debian or something. So, what I would wish is that they'd probably rename the command to something like arch-install, just like ha or arch-install or arch-installer. Whatever they choose to name it, it'll just be like a simple command that you put in, and then you can start to use it. Because if you look at void install, the void installer, it's just one command, and people are immediately led to that because it's an easier, simpler method, and it's the only method to install void, I'm pretty sure. So I'd wish that they'd make the name and the starting command more, like, less obscure. And finally, I'd wish that they give more options, like the languages, since Arch Linux and other Linux distros support a lot of languages. It's kind of weird that the installer only supports, like, five to seven. So they would definitely add more languages, and I feel like the partitioner, it's kind of lacking, I'm not gonna lie. Because you just, it's either like have it do all the partitioning for you, which isn't bad by any sense. But if you if you want to do anything fancy, like you want to do swap, actually swap is built in. But if you want to do custom home partitions, if you want to mount another partition as your home partition, that's not possible yet in the installer. So I'd say just package another, like everyone already knows thing in partitioner into it so yeah we are almost done with the install of course this is arch and when it does finish installing i'm going to show you how this is not bloat so i chose the plasma package you could definitely still go with a tty package uh oh now i want to talk about what are the next steps for arch because Arch has always been considered this, like, there's always a hierarchy of how hard a Linux distro is to install. So, like, st to start, you have Linux Mint, Pop! OS, Ubuntu. You know, those I would consider are the easiest to install. Like, they have NVIDIA are easily done. They have, like, Calamare, GUI installers that are packaged pretty well. You know, they're pretty simple to start, so... And then next you have like Fedora, which uses Anaconda installer, which is kind of weird. MX Linux, which has its weird installer. And then probably, probably Artix Linux, I'd say, as kind of the intermediate. Because even the Artix uses Calamares, it's still kind of difficult to figure out. So those are the immediate. So the Linux elites, they'd never use those. They'd stick with something like Arch, which used to require you to put in all the commands or put in a script. And if you used a script, you'd get publicly shamed on Reddit because you chose to use a script instead of putting in every single command and taking two hours. Next, we have Gentoo, which compiling everything by yourself. It's definitely painful. You know, well, I have myself a six core machine. It's not bad for compile time, but it's not good either. And then we have Linux from scratch, which is compile everything yourself. So these three are kind of like the biggest hard to install. So now since Arch Linux has its own easy installer, they're probably going to be moving on to Gen 2. So now the installation is finished and it asks me would you like to root into the newly created installation and perform post installation configuration. I'm going to say no. If you would like to do that you can but since I'm just going to use the new system we're going to do that. We just type in reboot. And there we go. Let's start it up again full screen. Alright, so now we have 
the very weird SGDM theme. It's not the Brie theme, which is kind of weird, but let's ignore that. So, oh, it has detected all my screen borders, which is great. Actually, not really. It's just, just I have, I'm using the same mouse. Anyway, so let's open up a console window. Whoop. And here's another thing. If you're using the Manjaro script, you're going to avoid this because you don't have to deal with pseudo files. So if you are, you're going to have to know how to do some. So Arch Linux, it gets bumped down into like intermediate instead of easy. So this is definitely something that keeps it away from like the easy to install. So now I don't want to mess with the pseudo files and whatever. So I'm just going to do su instead. So I just want to do neofetch. Okay, so we have a total of 659 packages, three of which which I requested for it to install. So it would only be 656 if it was default, and you could get it lower if you choose to not install K KDE Plasma. And we ha it's about 500 megs of RAM on start, which is really good. We can ignore everything else. So, there we go. That's the end of the script. And by looking approximately at my time on this video compared to the Manjaro video, this is definitely a shorter and easier method if you just want to hop on a new Arch machine. There's definitely no jank to this. Because if you noticed before on the Manjaro video, there was quite a lot of jank where like there'd be missing icons and themes because the Manjaro branding got removed. So that's it for this video. Have fun getting bullied by Redditors because you used an Arch install script. And I'll see you in the next video. See ya.